Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Friday, May 28th, 1 p.m. Let me know if you can't hear me. I'm hoping my audio is working today. Thank you for the acknowledgement. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, this is the annual student art exhibition for 2021. Um, my name is Min Carrico. I'm co-chair and faculty of the visual arts. And I'd like to take the moment to acknowledge the land that we stand on. Um, I presently stand on and occupy land the, of the Coastal Salish, particularly the Snohomish folks. And um, with that, um, I want to pass it off to Adi, my colleague, and she's going to kind of uh, take it from there. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. It's great to see you and have you here to celebrate the publication and our annual art exhibit. Uh, so for those of you that aren't aware, the art department, um, every spring quarter, we have an annual student exhibit in coordination with our annual student publication uh, produced by men's uh, visual communication students. So this year, um, given the pandemic and the absence of students on campus, uh, we collected artwork from a number of our studios, including drawing, painting, design, photography, and our sculpture and ceramics programs. And we collected a, a, about 60 pieces of artwork that had been abandoned by artists over the course of about 10 years. Um, I would say the majority of the work is probably about within the last five years, but we had a beautiful collection of art that that no longer had an owner and most of it, we didn't know who had created it. So um, the theme for this year's publication was Artist Unknown in which our design students, our uh, Visco students uh, highlighted and featured a number of that artwork in their publication. So in a little bit, we'll have the Visco uh, design students speak about that. Um, but first I would like to share some of the artwork from um, that we had collected and some of which has been featured in the three publications. So Min, if you would start the slideshow there, we can talk a little bit about that. Let me know if you can't see the slideshow. Yep, looks good. So these are some uh, paper sculptures from our three-dimensional design class. And we don't know who the artist is or why they left it behind. See some photographs, both digital and um, black and white photography is featured here. These were all printed and just left in a stack in the classroom. Or on various hard drives um, that we found throughout the computer lab. So we have some paintings and collages. And one of the objectives for the students, um, student designers, was to edit and choose and basically curate uh, the, the entire exhibition for their publication. And hopefully later we'll talk about um, some of their ideas and what, what they were selecting and how they come to their, uh, their decision to include work or what to, what to include or what not to include. So it's pretty unusual to feature artwork from unknown artists, um, but it, it's been a pretty cool opportunity to give life to these really amazing works of art that clearly students spend a lot of time creating um, and for whatever, uh, for whatever reason have forgotten about or intended to come back and collect. Um, so it's really wonderful that the publications are featuring this and we have a chance to, to see all this work. The next question is, what do we do with all of this artwork that we have? Can we really hard to, we kind of have a department policy that we don't retain artwork after a certain period of time, but as you can see, it's hard to to just recycle or throw them away. So um, a lot of talent represented here. 
but we did find a, you know, a, a positive opportunity during this pandemic to go through all of our storage areas and go th- and clean. Um, after about 10 years of being in the building, you know, we accumulate stuff and we know that if we don't, ac- if we don't remove some of this stuff, we're just gonna keep accumulating and it's gonna be so much stuff that, um, that we won't be able to use our studios efficiently. So it's a, an opportunity to do a couple of different things, uh, showcase this lost work, clean our studios, uh, give our designers, design students uh, an opportunity to build a publication um, that's publicly dis- being distributed today. And, you know, really, and this publication really, you know, demonstrates the vast diversity of work that we have from sculpture to pottery to two-dimensional design, digital design. So in many ways, you know, we see, we saw this as an opportunity to showcase like almost everything that we do in the visual arts um, in this manner. Thanks, Ian. So um, next I'd like to introduce the visual communication students and designers of the publication. We have with us Sara and Lisa, uh, both who have uh, created a publication that we'll be sharing with you uh, digitally and the publications have been printed and are being distributed throughout the community in different sites. Uh, Min, can you speak to that? It seems like we have everywhere from Starbucks to perhaps some locations on campus. Um, are there other specific sites that we're intending to distribute these? Sure. Um, we have a running list right now. It's uh, it's slowly growing. Um, I put it in the in the chat. Um, and thanks to Melissa Gueros, who's going out to deliver all this stuff for us. Um, she apparently has reached uh, a number of locations by the check marks and the X's where she could not drop off things. But we're, we're kind of keeping um, everything within about a five mile radius of campus. Um, so that way it really um, connects with our community members and trying to be uh, present within like a, a number of other um, you know, locations where uh, people can still frequent during the pandemic. Um, I'm not exactly sure which Starbucks it is. Um, I think I think Melissa's goal is trying to hit all the Starbucks, at least as many in the area as possible. Um, so I know definitely, so I'm not exactly sure which one in particular, I'm trying to ascertain that uh, that information later. But definitely some of the local, local uh, publication, local venues is where we're also trying to be present as well. So um, everybody's, it's, so there's a stack of them. Um, they, these are the, the copies. I'll just hold it up real quick. So can I give you a scale? This is Lisa's work. Uh, this is Zara's publication. And Sophia, who's not here right now, this is um, her publication. And it's a 20 page publication. Um, these are all created within the Visual Communications 245 course, the publication design course. And traditionally or historically what we've done is that we would work on um, the layout and the design for uh, the annual student publication called Between the Lines. And at the beginning of this quarter, at the beginning of the winter quarter, um, we, we meaning myself and um, Amanda Laughlin, the faculty advisor for the publication, um, decided it really was not prudent for us to kind of go through with the publication with being in a remote operation, uh, which I was fine with, but ultimately that left me with a hole within the class of what the class is going, supposed to do for their, their project. Um, at the same time, Adi and I and Monica, um, the other co-chair of the department, um, we were cleaning our studios with all this lost artwork and we're just talking about oh, what this, all this lost artwork just like laying around and just laying in piles and it's a great collection so we and then at the same time we were talking about what are we going to do for the student art gallery ex- exhibition in the spring so we have all these little things going on you know concurrently and then suddenly we said like well let's just put the lost student artwork into a- an exhibition and then since we can't have an exhi- exhibition on the campus we said well let's just turn it into a publication for my, my students. So 
all lo and behold, you know, we, you know, my students put all this together and, you know, it's kind of, you know, very resemblance of the uh, design world where things just kind of happen organically. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of all my students. I wish we could publish all of them. There was uh, 11 students. We couldn't publish all of them due to budget and uh, some other restrictions. But I'm very proud of all the students to pull it together and kind of work, you know, remotely. Um, and I think it's a really a testament to, uh, in many ways, how things will be perceived in the graphic design industry and the design, in working remotely. Um, so it's a lot of great practice. So today, our, one of our you know, goals for between Audie and Monica and myself is to, you know, let the students speak about their work, get practice on, you know, doing talking on Zoom meetings because that's how interviews are being conducted nowadays. And, um, you know, it's a great practice, but it's also a great way to celebrate the end of the quarter and uh, with our student artwork, not being on campus, but being pushed out to the public. And also to celebrate Monica, um, Monica James uh, becoming tenure. Um, for those who don't know, tenure is a rite of passage for the faculty here at the college. Um, Audie and myself have gone through tenure and it basically means that um, we have a job for life. Um, they've invested in us and we're investing into the college into uh, being here in a relationship and working with the college and with our community in building a robust uh, program. So um, with that, um, shall we start looking at some of their, their publications? Yeah, I'm wondering if we can begin with introductions. Uh, Zara, yeah. if you would just introduce yourself, tell us about uh, where you are in your education, what your goals are beyond Edmonds College, uh, educational goals, career goals, who you are as an artist, anything, uh, anything you'd like to share about you and your background. So Zara, can we start with you? Okay, hello everyone. Um, People always influenced by their family, usually. So I influenced by uh, my father and mother, mostly for sure. Um, my father has is an international artist, has a art in um, uh, London, Italy, Jordan, and Iraq Museum. So with that, I grew up with the uh, passion for uh, handicrafts, for uh, photography. Um, I tried to use all that with the graphic design and uh, had my own business with uh, customizing candles. Um, especially for this time, I'm using the graphic design and photography. Um, for my study, I'm, this is my last year. Hopefully, this is going to be my last year uh, in visual communication. And um, I'm going to go with the graphic design. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Lisa. <laughs> Let me see, we're having an issue with unmuting Lisa's mic. There we go. Okay, got it. Um, so about me, I guess um, a long time ago, I used to work in printing um, where I learned a lot on the job of um, kind of getting my feet wet with graphic design and the production process um, and took a break to raise kids and decided before I go back to work, I'd like to go back to school first. So that led me to Edmonds, which was a fantastic choice. I'm sad it's my last quarter. Um, that's kind of my story, I guess. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yes, thanks for sharing. Publications. So, well, let me, um, how about if I, We'll start with Zara and then I'll share the printed publication so we, we kind of get a feel for it. I know it's going to be kind of hard, but uh, but I'll put the uh, PDF of the version uh, online so that way people can look at it, um, you know, and maybe able to examine it a little bit more closely. Uh, but so this is Zara. I want to move this. when we do design, you know, we always have to kind of think about the left and right page. So we ultimately chose um, a tabloid sized newspaper, partly because it's fairly inexpensive and very easy to um, 
put together these days. Uh, these are actually, actually printed in just outside of London uh, and then shipped over here. Um, but this is all, this is what the printer only does is specialized newspapers. So we wanted to give the students a very broad, you know, canvas to kind of work on. Um, I'm just going to switch over to the uh, physical or the digital publication because it's just a little bit easier to kind of navigate overall. Um, but you know, the nice thing about a large publication is a tactile experience of holding that paper and being able to see it, especially if you're at a coffee shop, um, you see other people can look at it and then you can see it from afar. Um, turn my... And the nice thing about having something physical to hold in your hands, and we're all consuming images and art all the time, just swiping through our phone and we look at it for just a minute, but to have something to hold in your hand, an object is just really pretty special these days. Right. Unfortunately, the digital version has some problem with the, the, the masked head here, but we'll just, uh, you know, you can, you can see it. I'll hold up the hand version, but, but ultimately, um, we also featured um, a page for um, the fall and the winter artist who exhibited on the college. Um, of course, did we, you know, for the visual arts, we had to um, kind of rearrange our schedule and rearrange the location for our, um, our winter artists, but they adapted as well. Um, so it gives also the story about the, uh, the art that's being published or being hung at the campus. So there was a certain amount of fixed content that all of the publications would include, which are um, a statement letter from Min regarding the, the purpose and uh, of the publication, as well as um, information about our fall and winter art exhibits. And soon you will also be seeing profiles on all of the art department faculty, as you see here, um, either our headshots or selections of our artwork, as well as our bio. So there was a, a certain amount of, of fixed content that would be required um, in the publication. <laughs> but then uh, Zara and Lisa, you also had a certain amount of creative license in terms of which artworks you are going to feature. It seems like you both featured um, your own art and photography as well as certain pieces from the, the unknown artist student collection. Um, since we're looking at your publication, Zara, can you talk a little bit about your the choices you made in your design? Maybe just your cover image or any other images you, you featured from your own yeah. Uh, I tried to make the whole theme about photography, so I chose to choose the only photographies, and uh, the cover and the background was also my photography. <clears throat> I took these photography. How did you select? There was a lot of photography to pick from. How did you make your choices? I tried to make a story between each two photo there, or in each page. Try to make a short story between. Can you tell us a little bit more about the story or the narrative you're you're trying to? Um, like in this page, uh, I thought that he is looking for something, so I tried to contact between his idea and uh, something in the other picture. So he's looking for that baseball. Um, there's another one with the taking a camera to um, taking pictures in the cameras to mem memorize something. So uh, as I remember, there were two sitting together. Um, just like these. <laughs> what would you say was challenging about this project? Um, the challenge is to make the story because because each picture is different than the, the, 
than the other one. So uh, I tried to make uh, a story and um, to make it colorful or colorful or black and white. And I like how you mix the difference between color and black and white, um, especially like going from, you know, this very calm and peaceful kind of image, you know, with these uh, three images of the outdoor scene, but then going into something like colorful and chaotic. So it's kind of like this contrast. Um, so it kind of keeps uh, a very nice um, uh, pacing. So it doesn't, so it kind of engages the reader in many ways. And then like the you know, transition between this chaotic back to a transition to color from color to black and white and kind of keeping that chaos with the uh, um, the image there and then kind of going back to the calm. Is there anything you would change differently? <clears throat> you know, if you had to do it all over again? I don't think so. I like them this way. <laughs> and you know, what we did for um, all the students uh, was the back page was their page. Um, it was free for them to have autonomy to design how they wanted to uh, feature their own work, as well as kind of talk about like who they are as a designer or what their inspirations were. Uh, so this is one thing that a lot of designers don't get a chance to do in, the, in a professional world because we're just here to re represent the client, not ourselves. But with this student publication, um, again, we had some fixed content. We had some, you know, autonomy for them to um, choose content and kind of build that theme, that story. And at the end, we really want to just feature the students and their work and what they want to do and have their voice be heard. Um, this is also the other intersectionality of like for the student art exhibit. Um, in past, we've had some representation of context from our visual communication students, but this is the this is pretty much the primary definition of like what visual communication students do is make things. So it's really a, a great honor again for to work with these students and to be able to have their work tangible in their hands, um, which oftentimes with graphic design, it's just kind of, we see it and then we kind of move on. Um, this is something that will live with the college, you know, archives for uh, years to come as part of our history. Thank you, Zara. <clears throat> Love to hear from you, and maybe Min, you could um, just briefly hold up the hard copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have Zara's. Oops. Yeah. There we go. Can't see it. Lisa, here we are. <laughs> Again, you know, and you know, Lisa, and the, the wonderful thing about design and publication is that you can play with the front page and lead it to the back page. So you're, you know, bleeding over and you have this sense of a bit much larger picture. And, you know, it's a pretty big canvas to kind of work on and be able to display this work. I'll just do a couple pages here from the inside. Again, the fixed content and, you know, for designers, this, this kind of work is like a puzzle um, because I think the common uh, concern from all, every, all the students was the faculty page and how do I fit all these words in these images and lay it out that's organized in a manner. Or how do I work with, you know, just two images and work with negative space and how the negative space becomes part of the process of the design layout. I'm just gonna switch over to the PDF version, so. Lisa, of course I was so pleased to see your, your <laughs> cover uh, image, which is your own painting that you, that you did in my two-dimensional design class. Um, beautiful. It's really lovely to see it in printed version. I think it was a great choice. I'm sorry to say that the screen is cut off part of the publication.
it was always interesting to see when this this project is that which student picks for the center for image for the publication because um, it was quite popular that this image came up a number of times. And this is the page that you know all the designers had concern about because there was about 150 words from each instructor plus their plus their selfie plus their image from their artwork some and this is where you know designers get to choose if they want to leave something out put something in put it all in there how do i organize it make it look cohesive and then leaves the back page <clears throat> So Lisa, I have some of the same questions uh, for you that I asked Zara, just about um, how you made your selection of artwork, what the process was like for you, challenges, things like that. Um, <clears throat> so it was actually, it was really fun to go through all the artwork and try and find um, pieces that might look to get good together on the same spread um and then try and chain them all together so that one spread would kind of lead into the next page and just to kind of have that rolling visual story going out throughout the the publication um and then doing the layout was something i really enjoyed too because i i just it's something i get a kick out of um the the this page right here the instructor portion was the biggest challenge to try and figure out how to get it to fit and not be overwhelming and and figure out if, if everything could go in or if I had to leave something out. Um, and I think one of your questions too was if there's anything I would change. I don't know if I would change this page, but I I would I would maybe want to go back in and play around with it a little bit and see if there was a way that I could change it up to make it um, just a little more um, uh, just a little different. Maybe just change it up so it's not so kind of all the same on both sides. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it all turned out. It's impressive you were able to fit in both the profile photos and the um, example of the artwork, along with the, obviously the text. So that's quite the design challenge. Lisa, could you, share, could you share a little bit about how um... The narrative that you're uh, kind of tying together with all the different images um so i what i was trying to do was i would find like this one for example one is really kind of soft and the other one is fairly sharp and so i was kind of playing off those two as a contrast um whereas some other pages maybe it's that um they have kind of curves that go the same way. And so they're kind of similar, but yet still different. Um, so that's what I was really going for is to find a way that um, pieces from different sorts of mediums as well, how they could be similar yet different and kind of tie them together from spread to spread and from, you know, page to page. Um, like this one in particular, um, the one side it's very angular and geometrical whereas the other one is more organic and curvy and the colors are similar but yet they're and they're um both paintings but yet they're still very different at the same time if that mm -hmm. no no i i like the, the the contrast between like the rounded shapes and then the more structured grid like squares that are there um but then you know the the amoeba like painting also does have some structure but there are no corners so it's, yeah it's uh you know it's very evident that, that you're you know in, in publication design and you're always trying to connect the right page to the left page when you flip it over and you know we don't see pages as just two at a time we see as designers want to try to tie it together as one long lineage of a page um yeah Which one's your favorite layout? 
Um, hmm. I don't know if I have one that was, I, well, could I say the cover? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I oh. love I love playing with bleeds, and so I loved that with the cover, I could bleed across the back. Um, since because it's a newspaper publication, we couldn't bleed off the edges. Um, so I had fun doing that and matching up both sides and being able to make the most of what bleeds I could work with. Right, and for those who are not in publication design, I mean, we see the pages as as designers, we see them as one page, even though. Physically, there are two pages, um, but in design, um, the bleed off is to go from this side and have the image come over here. It doesn't necessarily work that well on this type of publication because um, things don't line up. And there, the restriction was that we couldn't go beyond the margin. And the only two places we can go beyond the margin is centerfold because that's the, it's one sheet of paper that can be printed across. And then the back covers, but the back covers because it's one sheet of paper, as opposed to somewhere in between. It's physically two sheet, two sheets of paper. Uh, so there's a mechanical thing. Um, if you don't mind, I actually like to ask Zara, what was her favorite layout? Can I answer the Can I answer in the same uh, same Lisa? I, I'm gonna go with the cover because it's my uh, my son photo. <laughs> That's perfectly legitimate too, because I think, you know, again, I think a lot of times, you know, as designers, we do the stuff in the middle, we do everything from end to end, but, you know, we're generally like the, the wizard from the Wizard of Oz. You see our work, but you don't see us. Um, so I that's, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly, perfectly fine if you choose the, the front and back cover as your favorites, because it is about you. Can you talk about the title of your publications? Um, sure. Um, I chose, okay, so the, the theme that we were going for is kind of a lost and found or um, discovery. Um, and so I chose varnish, which might seem like it doesn't make much sense uh, for the theme, but I chose varnish because um, it was kind of my idea of finding lost things and being able to find a way to elevate them um which in essence i guess it's what a varnish is where you make make something old and possibly re redesign it and make it pretty again um yeah and plus it's just a one quick word kind of stands out so varnish it was right varnish it was yeah even the students all had autonomy on um, choosing the title um can we ask the same question to zara uh, yeah, I choose passion because um, I have a passion about graphic design and the thing with the layout and these things. So, and photography. So it's all about passion. I have a question for both of you. Um, how do you see art and design? What What is the difference between art and design? Both have taken art classes and you're in the design program. Um, it's a question I often pose to my design students as well as my art appreciation students. Um, so what are your thoughts about what is art and what is design? There, there are some crossover and similarities, but your experience uh, doing both, how would you distinguish them? Um, I would say art to me is just creating something, um, whereas design is planning something. So that's kind of where I see the distinguish, like the distinguishing line between the two. Very similar, but design is more of um, like an intentional plan. Mm -hmm. Sarah? Um, well, for me, I see they are connected to each other because you can find art in everything uh, by color, by design, by adding things, uh, techniques together. Um, I, I have my own business uh, with the customizing candles, so I use art and designing together 
and these things. Yeah. I mean, both are forms of visually communicating to an audience, right? Mm -hmm. But um, as you said, Lisa, design has a, has a plan or a, solving some kind of a, a problem or there's a, a purpose there. Again, I mean, not that fine art doesn't have a purpose, but um, I, I'm always asking that question to my students. And given your role in this, I was curious about your perspective on that. Are there any other um, things you, either one of you would like to share about your involvement in the publication, um, your process, your inspiration, ideas? Or even aspirations, because I think, you know, this is a, a great place. You know, I, I know, um, not everybody's graduating this quarter, but definitely within the next two quarters, there's going to be um, completion here. Um, yeah, aspirations, Tim. Anything you want to add? And also, by the way, folks, if you want to drop a question to um, anybody, uh, just drop it in the chat box. Audie and I are both monitoring it, so we can feed the questions to our to our uh, our guest. What I'll do is, um, how about if I share Sophia's work? I won't speak for Sophia, um, but I think it'd be, uh, since we had three publications produced, it'd be good to show everybody's work while we're here. <clears throat> there we go. So there's, there is a Sophia O'Hara's uh, publication. Um, I'll hold the physical version for first off. So and then front and back cover, which I'll probably I'll probably safe to say that's probably her favorite um, spread as well, because <laughs> it's all about her and her work. And then uh, again, they had this, the same fixed elements at the beginning. How do you lay out? Um, you know the the exhibition for the fall winter quarters from our uh, guest artists and then a little introduction about the publication. And then she designed, um, you know, a little tile theme that kind of goes on page to page to help tie the pages together. And I'll go ahead and just go to the PDF version. So um, be a little bit easier to read so you can take a glance at it. Was, what I found very interesting about this class was um, seeing all the editors and all the designers see what they choose and how people gravitated to certain pieces uh, quite regularly between um, either photography or um, like the image on the left here I've seen a, a couple times in other publications. And then the centerfold, this is the, this is the most popular image throughout all the publications and they always put, most people put it in the center. And this is her um, solution for the uh, instructor page. Um, and she tied in that hexagon theme for all the images for the instructors. Um, yeah, I think there's always that, you know, she chose to leave out the samples of the student or of the instructor's work uh, and just focus on the instructor's uh, selfie or um, um, by, in bio and, and portraits. And then Sophia's last last page where she talks about herself and talks about her work and her aspirations. There. So I have a question in the chat from a comment and a question from Kathleen. Um, 
saying that um, that she appreciates having a physical publication to hold in your hand. And I totally second that. Um, her question is for the artist, how important is attention to detail to, to you? Do you prefer simple images or highly detailed images? Oh, and uh, it's actually Jake. Jake is, um, is Kathleen. Thank you for the question, Jake. <laughs> Um, so Zara and Lisa, just to repeat that, um, how important is uh, attention to detail to you? And do you prefer simple images or highly detailed images? Um, uh, attention to detail was really important in this. I was going through every page and making sure that there was the exact right amount of space between the image and the text. Um, um, so that was important just because you want to have uniformity throughout the whole thing. Um, and as far as simple images or detailed images, I guess it kind of depends on what the image would be because there's a place for both. Um, it, it would just depend on, um, I guess whether, yeah, what kind of image it would be. Sometimes it's really nice to have something really detailed where you can get in there and really dive deep into it. And sometimes um, something more simple is nice as well. And it's just uh, good, uh, um, great, it just in its simplicity. So yeah, it's kind of a iffy answer, but it just depends, I suppose. And Jake says, right. It depends on the situation. And I do like your thought process, Lisa, of mm. having contrast, but also the, um, you know, in the layout, but also that the images complement each other. It's a, it's a tough line to walk, having mm. contrast and also just that complement each other well. So I think um, some of those pieces do represent more detail while others were just more kind of bold and graphic and you really walk that line nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that attention to detail is something that's, uh, you know, we, we try to instill in all of our students. I think design, you know, we look at graphic design or visual design, um, we always are impressed by the big picture, but the, the devils are in the details of how things are put together, um, especially in this case, because since we're working with a, a remote printer, um, you know, we just had to upload all the files up to uh, their server. Um, and their server basically can go through every single file and reject everything that does not meet their technical specifications, which is the very, very essence of the details. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple instances where um, students were designing with outside the margin or inside the, you know, in the margin area. Uh, so outside the boundaries of where they could print uh, and they were, you know, um, kicked back from the printer. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things about, for those who are in the graphic design field, um, it's, you know, it's always about the big picture, but really it's about the details, the, how you put them together, make sure all technical specs are, are fitted correctly. And it's a little bit like engineering. And we always talk about like, you know, especially when we're trying to tie visual images together that don't necessarily belong with each other visually, is trying to find a thread. And when you're trying to pick an image to go with, you know, a sculpture to go with a painting, what combinations do they have, as well as what do they contrast? And I always like to, Ken, it's like, you know, um, kind of be a matchmaker for, you know, your friends and it's like trying to pick the right piece to go with each other. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think there's a, a question here from Emma. Uh, I think for both of you is something that, something that I'd really be interested in hearing more about is, where did you where did you guys find your inspiration for creating your publications? And then she also further say that she knows Zara um, and know a little bit talked about her family and how her parents are a big inspiration in her work. Um, I guess that's part of the publication, right? For, especially for your title, right? Well, I always do go online and check for inspiration more to um, to see what's the new ideas, to find something new always and try to, in that way, I try to do something new. 
I don't want to copy uh, someone else, but to find a new idea. Yeah. How about you, Lisa? Um, similar. Um, looking at other colleges publications helped um, because I could get a good idea of what they were doing and what worked um, to give me an idea of a direction that I'd want to go, but also um, not to copy them as well. So, and there's a lot of really great publications out there. I know, Min, you had linked several for us to, to research on. And so that was really helpful in, in finding some sort of inspiration in the direction I wanted to go. Yeah, I'm a large proponent for just searching online. I mean, there's so many, you know, when in comparison to 20 years ago, uh, when you were searching online, it was very difficult and arduous. It was, it was almost hard to find a lot of things. But after 20 years, you know, of, of full internet um, data dumping, really, you can find almost everything online. And it's a great way to find inspiration. Um, and like, you know, Zara and Lisa said, um, it's a great way to look at information and get, get informed. But ultimately, as designers or creators, artists, everybody in the art world, we try to find a way to do it different than everybody else to make it our own, which I think both of you succeeded at. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, and I, for Emma, you know, I, I think I still, I think every artist still has challenges to find inspiration sometimes. But I think, you know, it's a testament for, like Zara and Lisa said, you just got to keep looking and then somewhere along the way for your research, you'll find what it is that inspires you to make work. Thank you for that question. I'm curious uh, what your takeaways are from this project, what you've taken away uh, that you will use in it as an artist and as a, a designer and what you think it could be a skill um, or experience that that will apply to your career path. Sorry, the, the voice is stepping. Can you repeat the answer? That question, sorry. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, what what are your takeaways from this project? What are you taking away experience and knowledge that you can apply to your art and design and that um, skills and experience that you, that will help you in your career? Um, everything was new for me, so it's all a new experience. Um, it's for sure it's going to be a great thing for my resume. It's a beautiful portfolio piece. Yeah. Definitely. Any new insight that inspires your art or anything um, that informs the designs that you'll be creating in the future? And Lisa, yeah. that's a question definitely for, for you as well. Um. <clears throat> Well, I found that I just, I really enjoyed the project. I like doing layout. Um, I, I know I'm repeating myself. I already said this earlier, but picking the pieces, putting it all together, laying it out with, you know, negative space and hierarchy. And um, I just really enjoyed it um, to the point where I'm leaning toward thinking that that might be what I want to do after graduation is find a job doing something like that that would involve layout. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> I'm just so excited to graduate. And I'm also very sad that it's my last quarter. Done a lot of great things while you've been here. And you raise a good point. I mean, in a way, this has become a curatorial project. You're, create, you're curating our student art exhibition mm -hmm. by your selection of which artworks are going to be featured and how and where. And so Mm -hmm. um, you're doing quite a few things within this one project. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Uh, Meryl asks a question. Is there an artist or artist that either inspires you or challenges your approach to your work or design? Um. An artist that I really enjoy is Saul Bass. Um, his movie poster designs 
um, and the way that he approached um, his layouts and his typography, I find inspiring. Um, in fact, the piece that I put, one of the pieces that's on the back of my cover um, was specifically inspired by Saul Bass, um, the North by Northwest poster. Um, so that's my first, that's my first pick. For me, usually um, just Google and uh, find everything nice. I and I have a look around. And I have also, no yeah. Yeah, you mentioned in the beginning that your father is an international artist. Yeah. So I assume that he has definitely informed your art style and design and everything like that. Yeah, he is a drawer, drawing uh, photographer, and he used the uh, ortho uh, silks and white wires and uh, making uh, pictures. Thank you. And thank you, Meryl, for your question. Well, folks, uh, we're approaching um, 152, um, just towards the conclusion of our our activity or exhibition for uh, student art artwork. Um, are there any final questions from anyone? Touching back on Min's question, where are you going from here? I know you both have a little bit of more time at Edmonds, but what's next for you? Yeah, what's the future? Um, still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm uh, doing an internship right now where I'm doing web design, and I've I've been enjoying that quite a bit. Um, so yeah, still just kind of waiting it out, and we'll see. Good things, I hope. Good things in the future. <laughs> well, for me also, I'm for sure I'm gonna have uh, have luck for a job. But uh, for me, I prefer freelancer to be a freelancer. <laughs> That's excellent. No, I think there's uh, plenty of room for both um, freelance and you know uh, full time employment out there, and there's always the room. There's always room for doing both at the same time. Um, but I think right now, you know, the prospects for graphic design is really good. Um, every designer I know has been really busy ever since the beginning of the pandemic. And all the organizations I've spoken with have done some sort of hiring during the process of the pandemic. So, um, and, you know, with this publication that we've, that each of you produced for, um, and the coursework that you've done through uh, the, the rest of the, of your uh, academic career is a testament that we can do our work remotely and online and be and be connected and accessible. Um, but there's also still the value of having being in person as well and hand, handing a physical product to your client. But I think, uh, you know, the prospect for both of you is very, very promising. Um, just always remember that layout is layout, no matter if it's for UI or for a publication or business card. It's all about working with the elements and putting it all together. And I think both of you did a great job. And I just, you know, want to say thank you for uh, um, um, being part of the program. It's been wonderful watching your your academic success as well as your design um, aptitude grow. Um, I remember very fondly some of the early projects that uh, were created. But thank you. Congratulations, you too. Thank you Congratulations for joining us to for our uh, publication release party and and uh, alternative art exhibit. I thank also want to thank you, Min and Odi, because you were always there. Um, every email, every questions, you always will be there. Thank you very much. Glad to see you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Every have a good weekend. It's a three-day weekend, so uh, you know, don't check in on Zoom on Monday. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. Hey, Adi, you want to hang out real quick? Yeah. Let me turn that off.